Okay, this is the Duran Cage Auto Success Cover Interview. Part two. Part two. All right, so now, Duran, uh, we got some amazing background information on you and, and your success. Um, last part we got to is that you were a Chrysler OEM rep. You got recruited to Gary Matthews. You were a one-man show with an assistant doing 25 to 30 units max. Um, how did you take it to the profound success? What did you do to, to go to the next level? Well, what happened was, I mean, uh, Mr. Vine said, we, we kept trying to figure out how can we sell more cars because we had reached a cap where really we were getting about 300 leads to 350 a month and we were selling 30 to 35. And so he said, how can we sell more? I said, one, we got to have a better follow-up process because as we know, you know, if you sell 300, you get 300 leads a month and you're only selling 30, you're not following up. And then two, um, I said, we needed some training and more leads. And so he said, well, you know, find somebody that can train. And so I tell this story all the time, Sean. I get on Google and I was like, uh, okay, let me find uh, automotive internet sales trainer, internet sales trainer, internet sales manager trainer. And everything that I searched, no joke, it was just Sean Bradley, Dealer Synergy, Sean Bradley, Dealer Synergy. And so I started studying Sean, studying Dealer Synergy. Uh, you know, I was all over his website. This went on for weeks before I actually made the call. And so, um, I finally made the call to Dealer Synergy, got a hold of somebody, said, I want to speak with Sean. He said, well, no, you can speak with us about training. I said, no, I want to speak with Sean Bradley. <laughs> so then Sean called me back, and I told him my situation. Um, and he said, well, I'd like to fly out and come see you guys. So I went and spoke with Mr. Vines. I said, listen, I've got the trainer. I said, I know it. I feel it. I said, this is the guy that can help us get to the next step. And he just looked at me like I was crazy. You know? <laughs> And I said, why are you looking at me like that? He's like, because Sean came to us just over like seven or eight years ago and told us that you better change now and get into this internet game or you'll be finding out later on in life. And he's like, we remember sitting at a table eating with this guy in Jackson years back. And it's just crazy how with them not even telling me anything that Sean just pops back into the picture for an internet trainer. So that's how that happened. You know, after Googling and looking for trainers, the top trainers, for online uh, success, that's how you came in. So, uh, so then when you contacted us, what information did you, you get that was different, you know, uh, than what you were exposed to through Chrysler or from your own organic, um, you know, uh, thoughts and ideas? What did we bring to the table that was different or, or refreshing? Well, here's the thing. With dealer synergy, they're going to teach you, you know, like I say, the four P's over and over again, but it's just a truth. Explain that to them. That's the one thing people, we did teach you. People, process, products, promotion. And really, I, I look at it from that order. Like, if your people aren't right, I mean, that's the first thing. You've got to have the right people on your team. I mean, if you have, you know, bad, the, the best internet director in the world, but the people underneath him and next to him are not good, you'll fail. All right? The process is strong because if you got the right people, but you don't have the right process, then you can't execute. The products, you, like I mentioned earlier, you've got to have a really good CRM tool. You've got to supply them with the headsets. It took months, almost years, to get the headsets. I mean, that's, all this stuff's important. And the last thing is promotions because if you don't do those first three, why would you promote more people to come in if you don't have the right people, process, or products in place? And so that's, what's tr that's what you get a thorough understanding of with dealer synergy that you don't get as an OEM rep, and as an OEM rep, they're not teaching you the process on how to make a phone call. As an OEM rep, they teach you that your people need to be making proper phone calls, but there's not an OEM rep company out there, I'm pulling Vince Solutions too, that trains their district managers on how to make a phone call. I mean, right. that's the next step, I mean, but they don't train us that, they just train us to tell people that they need to get training, or they'll have, um, you know, an outside company that they use to help dealers with uh, phone training and processes and things of that nature. So. That's the difference with dealer synergy is, you, you know, really digging into the four Ps. And then when you break down each one. Let, let's, I, wanna, I want the people that are watching this to understand what you're saying is that there are no magic beans. I mean, it's not just about spending money and buying the best website or the best CRM or even hiring the most brilliant consultant or what have you. You know, the whole dealer synergy philosophy of four Ps is that an Internet department is made or broken maximize or underutilize in four critical areas. It's like an ecosystem. You need to have all four P's operating synergistically uh, with symmetry and precision to have success. And you have learned that, and that's the thing that I want to share. This is the, the nugget that people watching this should really understand. It's more than just one thing. It's a combination of synergy. Would you, is that what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. Yes,
All right. So now you had Dealer Synergy come in and they helped you, you know, with the model. What, what was the original game plan? Well, really, <laughs> it's like what you asked. It was the first question that you asked when we sat around that round table. I said, Mr. Vines, how many cars would you like to sell? <laughs> you know, of course, any dealers. People think I'm, I'm kidding when I said, did I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually said that to you right or wrong. The first thing that you said when we sat around, well, how, let's just cut to the chase. How many cars do you want to sell in your internet department? <laughs> You know, way back, behind me, we looked at each other. I mean, that's a big number. I mean, all we see is dollar signs in our eyes when we hear that. Like, man, we want to sell all we can. No, more specific, how many cars you want to sell, <laughs> Sean says. I'd like to sell, you know, we didn't want to get too crazy because I was thinking 100. I was like, man, I want 100. He's like, let's say 70. You know, let's call it 70. He said, okay, well, then let's sell 70 cars. He's like, you think we can sell 70 cars? He said, yeah. First thing we got to look at is let's dive into our four Ps. And, you know, simple math is we got to get 700 leads. I mean, that's that's just the way it works out. 700 leads, we got to sell 70 cars. Let's stop right there for a second. Okay. So explain that to the people. Are they going to sell 70 cars with 100 leads? No. <laughs> okay, so basically that's something that you guys understood, that there's, there's a direct correlation of how many leads that you need is going to, you know, uh, determine how many cars you're going to sell. And there's another variable. Depending on how many leads you're going to buy or generate, you have to have the right amount of appointment setters or Internet sales coordinators to handle those leads. Correct. So it's a cause and effect. Yes, sir. Okay, continue, sir. All right. So it says uh, how many cars you want to sell. We need to sell 70, so we need 700 leads. All right, so the next thing is, okay, what kind of training do we have? How many people? Because you've got to have the right amount of coordinators, just like you said. You know, we, we like to use 120 to 150 leads per coordinator. So if you got 700, I mean, you can divide that by 150, that's four, right? Or, or excuse me, actually it's going to be more than that, I'm using 600, but 700. So you might probably do five or six just to be safe, you know, and then you might want to pull in a, a lost opportunity coordinator, all this staffing that you can do. There's so many different ways, but you just got to keep it simple. Have the right amount of people to handle the right amount of leads. They got to make the right amount of phone calls, you know, and it, they've got to have the right amount of training, and the process has to be followed. So then Dealer Center helped you with the, what, what was the profile of these appointment setters? You know, the profile, you know, they did, uh, Dealer Synergy did the HR, so they helped me because I, you know, I probably would have been kind of lost. I would have just hired anybody just to, like, okay, we got Dealer Synergy, so let's hire anybody. But no, they hire people with really thorough, uh, you know, some of them have call center backgrounds, uh, customer service backgrounds, um, you know, really, they test them over the phone, making sure they speak well, sound good, and things of that nature. Wait a minute, and I want your opinions because you went from doing 25, 30 units all the way to 95 units or what have you on the Internet. I get a lot of pushback from people saying, oh, they have to have car experience. What is your experience here with your people here? How many people have actually sold cars or master product automotive sales specialists in here, and is it really necessary? I think zero. Am I right, Like Zero. <laughs> No, you so don't. wait a minute, wait a minute. So like, look at that in the camera. And, like, I'm gonna get real close. So you're telling me that you could have an entire internet sales department with a bunch of you know people that never sold cars before and still make millions of dollars? Is that what you're telling me? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, good. So you started with five or six appointment setters, and then where did you get leads from? Um, well, first, I mean, of course, everybody wants them from their own website, and then you got your phone, and so. Uh, to increase that, what we did is we got with Cars Direct, uh, Auto Vitel, Auto USA, and uh, a few other third-party lead generating companies. And of course, you still got your OEM leads, you know, and then uh, search engine marketing, video search engine optimization, um, and you just put all that together, and that's how we we got it. So. Okay, so now that you have five, six appointment setters, you got seven hundred leads. So then it must have been easy. Just uh, you, then you just turn around and just sold overnight ninety cars. No, <laughs> no, that didn't happen. There were some growing, <laughs> there were some growing pains, um, you know, at the beginning, because that's what I thought. I mean, I thought, you know, we came down here the first time after Dealer Synergy left, and you know, there's a couple here that remember we didn't even have internet <laughs> products. Were all we came down here, and everybody kept making fun of me. Wait, the internet department doesn't have internet because we moved down to our own little uh, building, and so we didn't have internet for like two or three days. So it was crazy, and then you know, we 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 started going a little bit, but. Um, you know, we had four internet sales managers, and the internet sales managers turned into be chiefs. So what they wanted to do was just tell people what to do. They didn't want to make phone calls, so we had to do some adjustments there. And then the most important thing is I wasn't training. You know, I was just letting everything go after dealer synergy left, and just you know, then you know, like everything's just gonna work out. But no training. I wasn't holding my people accountable. 
you know, that it just it was tough. You know, it was tough for you know for the first few months. But then you know, as part of the monthly support thing uh, that you explain that subject, what, explain what that was that in in detail that you guys got out of that because I definitely think that helped you with the accountability. Well, with the monthly support, not only you know do I have Sean that I can call on, but the other team they you know they mystery shop our people, then they send us emails with the score to see if they're if they're following the dealer synergy process that we have set up. And what happens is they offer training and and um, you know helping the each of the coordinators actually individually. It's not even in a group setting. But what happens is they keep asking you the same questions <laughs> dealer synergy does, and if you're not doing what they're telling you then the person that's at fault is the person in the mirror, you know, and that's what kept happening to me because dealer synergy would be like, okay, so uh, how many phone calls have you guys made total this month and how many leads have you received and how many appointments have you set and how many appointments has, you know, a Marsha set and how many has a Karen set and how many has this one set and I didn't have any of that information, none of it. I was like, uh, I don't know. I mean, they just set an appointment. Well, how many does your whole department have? I don't know. I mean, it just, I don't know. We're just off. We're, we're not getting enough leads. I just kept pointing fingers at everything, but I wasn't holding myself accountable, and that's where the monthly support came in because if that didn't happen ongoing, then I probably would have just been lost. I mean, we probably would end up like firing half the staff and just going back to what we used to do. And uh, Speaking of which, one thing that was really interesting with me that I'm very proud of you is that, that your retention. Can you share how long you kept your people for? Yeah, I mean, uh, most of them. The one that's been here the longest now would be Marsha, right? You know, um, and that's been how long? It's been 27 months. Yeah, 27 months. And of wow. Course, you know, Tyler here, he's been with me from jump. You know, started off as just a just a photographer and then just, just stuck with me. Um, Karen Holmes to my left, she's been here over a couple of years. Um, you know, the key that I tell them, and there's a few that have been here longer than that, but, I mean, other stores are – trying to steal people <laughs> all the time i mean it's just going to happen i mean any one of them could leave right now i mean because stores are just going to keep calling i mean even after this especially they're going to keep calling right <laughs> and so i do my best to just try to treat them good and just i keep telling them if you just stick with me and stick with this team and what we have i mean the, the what we have in the future is so much better than where we're, where we're at even right now you know so i mean it the grass always looks green on the other side, especially anybody that's in my position, GSM, own, well, not owners, of course, it's their own money. But from the ground level, there's people that are always going to sell you that it's so much better over here. But that's why those same people are the ones that are contacting us on a daily basis. Hey, what's going on over there? You know, so it's just, it just got to stay, you, you got to stay true to your people. And so that's how we've been able to keep them for so long. So it's been great. Now, one of the things that you said to me and Karen and Susan Givens, the publisher of Auto Success, one of the profound things that happened to you was the three-minute books. Can you explain that? Because this is really important that people understand the accountability at what level that you hold your people to. Yeah, I fought you on the, the three-minute book for months. <laughs> Bad, you know, I just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing it, we're doing it. And I didn't even have one myself that I was keeping up with. And so it's, it's a d disaster. But what happens is the three-minute book, what it does is it just gives you structure when you walk into work. See, like most coordinators are salespeople. When they come to work, even i got to work on this with my sales staff here right now, is that when they come to work, it's like, okay, clock in, what do I do next? It's just like, I don't know. you know. But with the, with the scorecard and with the three-minute book, it provides structure that when you come in, the first thing that you do is you look at why you're here. The first page lays out my goals. Right? It's just, you know, you got pictures, you've got your family, you got your vacation, you got your boats, whatever it is that you want, my, my dealership. <laughs> and you got to look at that and embrace that for a minute and understand why is it that I even come to work? Why did I wake up and come here? And then the second place, the second page is pretty much what is it that you want? How much money do I really want to make? Why am I here? How much money do I want to make? What are my goals? And this needs to be put into our minds every single day. You know, what are my goals? And where am I on track? And so how do I know I'm on track is by going to that last page, which is the most important page of the three in my book, is a scorecard, because that's your accountability page. And that measures where you're at today or what you did as of yesterday, or however you want to do your scorecard, but your daily activity versus your month-to-date activity. And so um, bringing that in and making that mandatory in this Internet department is what help make people accountable for their actions. Because nobody, just to give a quick example, 
if you're told to make 120 calls a day, which is what they're told, minimum 120, and you need to set at least three appointments, do you know what it does to your mind when you have to write down you only made 58 calls? And you have to turn that into the internet director who's going to look at it and sign off on it and write you a note, either yay, nay, goodbye. <laughs> you know, and so when I started doing that, and even hold myself accountable, when I, at the end of the day, I take everybody's tally, and I say, man, we got this many leads, this many appointments set, this many calls. And if it was off where I knew it needed to be, then I knew that something was off target. Either I need to spend more time in my building or either if one person has 40 contacts but they only set three appointments, then I know that this person needs some serious training on their contact to set an appointment. If one person has a set to show that they set 60 appointments but only 15 of them show, one or two things are happening. Either they're smoking it or I'm not confirming enough. Uh, go ahead, sorry. Okay, no, no, no. We're going to go to the next section.